without further ado, let's uh, let's go ahead and get going. Uh, and so I'll walk through. You guys can see my screen here. So a little format here. We're going to start with a presentation on our brand new product launch, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Peter Bush. I'm one of the co-founders of the company. I'm also our chief strategy officer. Uh, I'm going to be, re be presenting uh, for the first sort of 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'll be turning it over to my colleagues, Max and Chris. If you guys introduce yourself, please. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Max. If you guys don't know me, my name is Max. <laughs> I'm the sales director from North America. Mostly work with our video game team, but CGVFX uh, and a couple of our other territories around the world as well. And I'm Chris Barton. I'm a technical account manager here, and I support all of those clients. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda for today. We're going to talk a little bit about the background of the product itself. Super interesting history. Um, something where uh, we put a lot of uh, efforts and investment over the last two years in, in, in the testing. We'll talk about that. Uh, the key features and benefits of our, our new product. The new possibilities, things that you might not have considered Facebook for in the past. Now this is uh, gives you some other things to consider. Uh, a lot of questions on the pricing model, how that's going to work, some of the things here and possibilities. Uh, wrap it over, I'll pass back over to Chris and Max. They'll be doing a uh, in-person live demonstration of the tech. Uh, that way the proof's in the pudding. You guys can see how excited we are about it. Um, see that live firsthand. I want to encourage everybody, we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So in your webinar interface, there is a question box. Please post your questions there. Uh, post them throughout the entire presentation. Uh, we'll be taking some questions throughout the presentation, but mostly save that at the end. Uh, we'll try to get through as many as we possibly can. So thank you for that. All right, let's get into it. So what are we talking about here? So if you've used uh, our current product, Faceware Analyzer, you know that it's very accurate, right? Yet it uh, has some inefficiencies in the process. The result you see here, uh, the tracking points that you see, what we call our landmarks, are very uh, accurate and it's tracking face. But to get to that, let's talk a little bit about the process. We have teams shooting range of motion videos uh, just to build their tracking models, and then they go in and shoot their performance capture. In Analyzer, they're setting up a new job to typically build out their training frame and their global tracking model, their training frame library and their global tracking models. They're creating training frames for the eyes, the brows, the mouth. Uh, they're exporting that global tracking model, and then on every performance, they're setting up a new job for each performance. They're importing that tracking model. They're adjusting training frames for the eyes, the brows, the mouth, training that model, tracking it, QAing it, maybe adjusting training frames, training tracking again, QAing two, three, four times, right? Just to get to the point where you, the result that you saw looks really good. So as a company, we were looking at, you know, there's all these steps just to get to the point where you're exporting data and parameterizing just to see something going into our retargeter product and animation. So as a company, we evaluated what is the best thing to do here, right? Can we improve this process or we can think a little bit differently and revolutionize the way in which we think about how we understand motion and track faces. So two years ago, we set out a goal to simply eliminate the most time consuming part of our process, which is manual facial tracking. And proud to say, our new technology delivers on that promise. Over the last two years, we've done extensive testing. We offer this technology as a service to several game teams, processing uh, hundreds of hours of content through that technology to make sure that it's battle ready and tested for the rigors of production. Uh, we had an extensive amount of feedback that went into that tech to make sure that if we're gonna eliminate this process, if you use Analyze, you know it's, it's uh, you know, it takes some tweaking, but to jump all the way from that, what you just saw in all the steps, to completely automated, we needed to make sure that it, it'll work in your production. So we coupled our advanced machine learning with uh, some proprietary new techniques, and now we can perfectly track your, perfectly accurately track facial movement in seconds rather than hours, completely automatically. Now this unprecedented speed and simplicity not only as benefits to your current pipelines, there's a whole bunch of new possibilities we're gonna talk about today. And most importantly, I'm proud to say it's available now for years to own. You can adopt that into your productions at a much, much wider scale. So I'm proud to introduce Faceware Portal, powered by our new neural net processing. Now let's talk about a few of the key benefits, uh, features and the goals of this product. One, never manually track again, right? Let's just get straight into animation. This allows you to animate everything faster. That speed is going to allow you to iterate and make sure that your content looks as good as possible. 
to achieve our third goal, create more content than ever. The demands that we're seeing across all industries, the demand for content is going up. And so we want to rise to the occasion and bring a product to market that sort of matches the trends in the industry. Let's go back to that shot that we talked about, right? This is one of the more challenging shots that you might take through our analyzer product, right? You've got the backlighting, you've got the glare on his forehead, his big beard, uh, his shoulders, got some occlusion on the face, but he's making it, there's a great performance in here. Lots of interesting shapes, lots of training frames you're gonna add, you know, add to this. This is the first shot you're tracking an analyzer, you know, a pretty average trained artist is gonna take six to eight hours just to track this video, right? Now this looks really great. What you see the, the landmark points are sort of sticking to his face, even in all the challenges. So Analyzer does its job, but it has some inefficiencies. Now with one button click with Faceware Portal and our new neural net tracking, this video processes in just one minute and 37 seconds. That same challenging shot is processed through. You see the blue tracking points that were in Analyzer, they're now red, they're still our landmarks. They basically tell our technology where the rest of the face is. So in the parameterization, we can track all of the skin motion and lip thickness. Um, but you'll notice some new tracking points here around the mouth that are tracking the upper and lower teeth. Now that video that was playing back might've had a couple playback issues. So let me take that video full screen so you can watch again. And notice here again, the new tracking points for the teeth and how well this accurately tracks. This required no user input. There's no tracking model. There's no range of motion. The video is just imported into Faceware portal and then we processed. And this is the results that you get back. Now let's get a little bit more in depth than what you just saw. Again, with Faceware portal, say goodbye to range of motions. If you're creating a shooting a range of motion just to build your tracking models, no longer need to plan on doing that. You also no longer need to plan on building a tracking model. Now the performance you see on the right here, that's sort of our best practice. That's a best case scenario. You've got no background, uh, you know, background lighting, environmental factors. She's got really nicely well-defined features, right? Of course, this is gonna track and process well, but that's not our experience is that, you know, in the, in the captive side of things, production happens, right? If you put a head cam on an actor, uh, there's all things that can happen there, right? And so the rigors of production, our technology has to work there. That's something we're very proud of over the years, of being able to make sure that the tools that we develop are very pragmatic and very real uh, for production. So when you guys get into performance capture, you all know you end up with these cer certain circumstances, harsh lighting, camera shake, these extreme performances we wanted to test all of that through the portal and say, no problem. So let's take a look at some of these challenging shots. So over the last two years, we collected some footage from our most, uh, our largest customers. We asked them to send us the most challenging shots, the things that typically take the most time in Analyzer. Uh, so things like this, it's an extreme performance or the uh, era of COVID. What that brought is a lot of, you know, in office capture, at home capture, where you get this dynamic lighting on people's faces or the outright impossible right you see the helmet actually fall off here and uh the operator with a little bit of anxiety is running up right these shots are indicative not only of the, of the time the, the most time that your teams are spending on these shots but there's some critical moments in here for your storytelling and you want to make sure that if we're wanting to track and understand that motion these are the shots that are the most critical and so that's what we wanted to make sure this technology is ready to show and ready to track so in the four performance videos i've shown so far the processing time for all of those is three minutes. So this is the uh, interface for Faceware Portal. So you'll see the, the bearded clip processed it in a minute and 37 seconds. That dynamic lighting on, on the face was 35 seconds. The extreme performance, 37 seconds. And then where the helmet falls off, 33 seconds. So in the interface here, you can see the number of frames. And then on the right-hand side, you can see you can download the retargeting file, the FWR file, or a new file format, the JSON data, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. You have a debug log that's basically your QA video you can watch with the red tracking points on there um, and make sure that everything's looking good for that. So let's look at the results that we just showed you. So I'm gonna pause here real quick and we'll play these videos full screen. So this first shot here, you can see she makes a lot of really great asymmetrical poses and expressions. There's a lot of great subtlety in what her performance is. You wanna obviously capture all of that if, 
if we're going all the way for performance capture and motion capture. So let's look at the results here. Process fine, it's a great track, everything's sticking and locking on her face. We're able to go straight into animation now with a high level of confidence. Let's watch that dynamic lighting clip. So you can see the lighting um, as I start to play back here is sort of casting shadows across his face. That's the things that, that some of the facial tracking products on the market have challenges with. And lastly, this is sort of a performance you might not actually end up in your, in your final content, but it's something that's really interesting to watch and it gives you an idea of how the technology You're gonna see the helmet come off. Uh, the landmark points are sort of frozen in time on the last known sort of uh, frame that had a face in it. And watch when the helmet starts to come back on. The landmark points fly back on and stick on the face. And we're already starting to track again. I wanted to show you this is the robustness of our technology because we know in production, you're gonna throw a lot at it, but you've gotta have confidence when you start to work through your shots that things are gonna work and they're gonna work really well. So let's talk about the workflow. If you've used our products, you have a pretty good understanding of this, but I wanna be crystal clear on where you would use Facewear Portal in the process. So on the capture side of things, we still recommend obviously our flagship product, the Mark IV head cam system, capturing that with our Shepard's uh, software. If you've got an XN system or a Vicon or OptiTrack stage, you know Shepard integrates really seamlessly there. What comes off the stage is performance files, your, your MOV files, that goes straight into tracking. And our current product, the Analyzer, you're outputting FWR files. With Facebook Portal, you're essentially replacing Analyzer, right? You're, you're still bringing in the performance videos and the FWR files are coming straight out of that into our solving product for Targeter, which is most commonly used in Maya. So to understand, you're, 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 the change to your pipeline on the Targeter side of things is nothing, right? You're still importing FWR files and setting your poses. So the adoption curve is just sort of you know, removing analyzer in, in that part of the process. So it's, it, we're, you know, the hope in that is obviously that we're presenting, you know, teams that we're seeing now that are in current productions are making changes, not, not even waiting till the next production. The time savings is incredible here. And everything we've talked about and your understanding is really looking at the analyzer and retargeter workflow, which, you know, for video game teams, that's typically what you're running through your high-end cinematics, uh, for visual effects, maybe a hero character. But a space where we want to be able to expand that, right? We want to be able to take more of your content under our wing and be able to use this product on more, many, many more types of content. So there's additional features and benefits I want to go through and other ways to use the portal you might not be thinking about. So first and foremost is 100% capture confidence on set. Now, what does that mean? So if you think about from a performance capture operator standpoint, historically, the last 10 years of, that we've existed as a company, we focused hardly, focused really hard on making sure that operators are confident on how they fit and frame their actors to make sure that the, the footage that's coming off our head cams is going to work well in post. But it's sort of, you know, a trust in that you, you, you're capturing things correctly. Well, now with Facebook Portal, one of the things we did on a project we did with 2K was during the first day of capture when we're fitting and framing actors, we actually took the performance videos and ran them through the portal. So as an operator, not only do you know you're fitting and framing correctly, you know that it's actually going to process and post correctly on set. That gives you that capture confidence to know what you're capturing is exactly what's going to run through and post. For years, we've talked about facial previs in real time, and we all know what you see in real time is not indicative of what you see in post. This changes that equation fundamentally, and, and it's, it's a way in which you're using your post products on set, and we want to make sure that you're, you're thinking about that now when you're planning your productions and your performance capture sheets. Second, and we're probably most excited about this, this is what we'll be showing later in the live demo, is bypassing retargeting. Basically, processing videos and going straight to animation and outputting a new file format that allows you to iterate faster and animate more content, going back to those previous goals we talked about. Most importantly, obviously removing the, the tracking part of the process is reallocation of your resources. We saw a lot of our teams where the animators were actually tracking the shots that they're going into retargeting. Well, if you're spending half of your time just in the tracking, you're not really animating. That's your strength for your team. And so we wanna be able to you know, have those teams reallocate those resources. And, and that's where you're gonna see a lot of value and just not having to think about tracking anymore. So let's look at some of the metrics here. 
Now, what we're talking about with Facebook portal is the same quality, right? And so most teams, when they're processing a video, average video is about 30 seconds, right? With Facebook portal, it's done in about four minutes from the time you import it to the time you process it to the time you export it. Now with Analyzer, all the steps that we've been talking about, you know, an average artist on a good artist on average day, it's about taking about six hours to track that from scratch. Now you look at those time savings on an entire production, 90 minutes of footage, right? If you're hitting these same metrics, right? Four minutes to do 30 seconds and six hours to do 30 seconds and analyzer, multiply that across your entire production, right? Just a uh, one and a half man days, right? In, in Faceware Portal, 135 man days in Faceware Analyzer, right? So the massive amount of reallocation here, it's almost too good to be true. And that's why we're gonna be at the end here, encouraging you to try out the product, try it for yourself and see what we believe uh, is going to be a fundamental shift in how you plan out your facial pipelines. Now we're gonna be doing a live demo of, the, of um, the new JSON file format that comes out, but let's compare what that looks like in Faceware Retargeter. So this video here that I'm gonna be pulling up, the performance here in the middle, uh, that, that performance was processed with Faceware Portal. The FWR file was kicked out and given to a trained retargeter artist. They use Retargeter in Maya. This is a MetaHuman rig, so a great off-the-shelf product that obviously can create very good facial shapes. This takes about four hours to get to the quality of results. It's a really, really solid retarget. The left-hand side result is procedural. It's the result that comes out of the JSON data that comes out of Facebook Portal and was applied to the rig in Maya. So you can see that there's going to be differences in the quality here but it's fundamentally, you have to understand, this took almost no time. So the four hours to get just to the, the quality bar that you see on the right, that now can be allocated to polishing or moving to the next shot. Maybe this character's in the background. Again, fundamental shift in how you think about using our products. We also have a lot of teams that are looking to upgrade their procedural pipelines, right? They're using face effects or a speech graphics product. Fantastic, and very easy to use, but we get a lot of teams that are asking us, hey, we want performance capture um, for all of the characters in our productions, right? And so historically with Analyzer and Retarget, there was a lot of time there. Well, this is, a, again, a shift in how you think about using Faceware. So we're gonna play this full screen and play back a couple times and just watch the results. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab and the mad whale and started bending and quacking. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started vending and quacking. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, and the mad whale and started vending and quacking. So this represents your starting point. And that's, again, something that you haven't been thinking about is how fast you can get to the point where you're looking at animation from your performance capture. These are things you could look at on set, or do set up your pipeline as a true daily scenario where you're processing data through and looking at it at lunch for a portion of time, making sure that your performances look absolutely fantastic and, and you're gonna be a lot happier with how fast you can iterate with your content. So now let's talk about your workflow options, thinking of all the added features and benefits we just went through and your capture is still going to be running through the Mark IVs and your video files are coming out. You've got a couple options now on how you access the technology that's powering Facebook Portal. You can use the product yourself. We also uh, will continue to offer Facebook services where you guys can send us video. We will process it and QA it and return the data back to you. You've got three file formats being able to come out of uh, either product, right? Whether it's the portal or our services, you can get the FWR files for use in Retargeter, you can get the JSON data to use in these direct animation pipelines we're helping set up. But we also, one of the commonly requested things is teams are asking, hey, what if something doesn't process or track really well in Portal for whatever reason? Teams are very used to their analyzer workflows. So we wanted the ability to give a little bit of a safety blanket and output an FWT file that you can load into Face for Analyzer. So if you do wanna do further adjustment or refinement, you'll have that ability and that confidence when you go into your production. The nature of automatic technology is you're putting a lot of trust in that tech. But with production, you, you have to have fail safes and backups and you know, consideration plans. And now you've got all of this data that you can export and form your pipelines with. 
So on the solving side of things, still data going from F the FWR file straight into Retargeter, the direct animation pipelines you can get and build out of your JSON data, or we can recommend one of our service providers who's been using our products for years and years. Some teams look to outsource their entire facial animation pipeline. Speak to a Facebook business development rep today about how uh, if you're looking to outsource, we can recommend the right parties that can, that can help build out those workflows. Now let's bring up a few frequently asked questions that we got uh, again. Uh, the question box is available to you in our webinar interface here. Continue to ask those questions, uh, but we wanted to get into some of those main topics. So how do you access this product? Well, the Facebook portal is accessed via web interface. It gives you access to our cloud computing platform. We are going to be adding the ability to access via API in the near future. That was one of the most commonly requested things is, hey, I see the level of automation here you guys are doing on the technology side. Well, I want my scripters to be able to access this via API and build these beautiful work of art pipelines. Yes, we know that. We want to be able to embrace that and we'll, and we'll, we'll be bringing that API access in the near future. So why cloud computing? Well, cloud offered us the ability to deploy these, this, all this new technology at a scale that is unprecedented, right? The amount of speed and the amount of volume that this technology can handle is something we've never seen, right? And in, in terms of how our user base is going to adopt it. And so cloud gave us that reliance and there's less dependencies that we had to consider to get the deployment, get the technology out there. This allows us to update the technology, update the product more rapidly and improve the service overall. We're already getting fantastic feedback from our users and our beta testers, and we wanna to continue to improve that and rapidly deploy that. We're in this introductory phase. This is an enterprise level product. And what was important to us is that we bring this product to market as efficiently and as quickly as possible, but we can make those improvements, one. Two, we can scale with the demands of our user base and be able to bring all of those efficiencies to the, some of our teams are processing hundreds of thousands of lines of dialogue, and we wanna be able to scale that. A lot of questions on how the data is handled and can it be removed. So the data is stored on our cloud computing platform. It's all sort of uh, regimented and stored in, in the own private area for each account, right? The other big thing to point out is in the portal agreement, you can stipulate a schedule to remove that data or very soon we'll be adding the ability to manually remove that data. If your subscription expires within 60 days, we're automatically removing that data. Now, what's important to note is a lot of the teams that are looking to evaluate portal, we're getting uh, a lot of questions from their IT departments and triaging that through. We're very used to data security here at Faceware. We, we've been working with some of the biggest brands, whether it's a, a Disney, a DreamWorks, EA, Ubisoft, the largest companies in the world that data security is of utmost importance. And so we factored all of that into how we deployed Faceware portal. Any questions that you guys have, please put those in the question box or if your IT departments and the security InfoSec side of your company, let's make sure that those team members are involved in the evaluation part of, uh, of Facebook portal. Now on the pricing side of things, what's important to Faceware as a company is we wanna make sure all of the content that you guys are gonna be running through for your entire project is run through our products, right? We wanna capture all of that uh, and, and selfishly, we want to be able to take your whole pipeline and be able to, to contribute to your, your that in, in final content. And so in the past, you've seen uh, variable cost models from us, right? Well, for, with Faceware Portal, what we're rolling out is the ability to do unlimited tracking, all of your content running through Faceware Portal and Retargeter or the direct animation output, all of that at one fixed cost. This allows you, when you guys are evaluating Facebook Portal early in your productions, a lot of teams have no idea how much content they're gonna need. They might know the number of lines they need, the number of shots they're doing, but how much facial animation content do you need? How many iterations, how many takes? Well, fixed cost model allows you to put that in your budget and know confidently, look, we're using Facebook for this production, we're gonna run everything through it and not have that cost variability. And in this introductory phase, right, over the next two months, we want teams to lock in introductory pricing. So we've got aggressive with how we're pricing this to make sure that our early adopters are locking those prices in. Now, a lot of teams have already locked their budget in for this calendar year or their productions don't start up till the spring or summer or fall of next year, right? But we want you to lock that pricing in, do the evaluations now, make sure this is the right tool for your production, but lock in that introductory pricing and we'll reward you for making that commitment. We're already seeing a ton of teams already being able to do that. Uh, and we're excited to be able to get more people that are attending here to get into evaluations. Now, some teams don't have this, the same volume demands or even the same resource demands. 
So you can access our face where services to access portal. That's where you would send us the video. We'd import, we'd QA that data and return whether it's the FWR files or the JSON files back to you as a service. Now the services are a retainer model. You're paying sort of a, a monthly amount to be able to get the data process through on demand. You've seen the speed improvements that we've been able to, to roll out and deploy with Facebook Portal. Now the teams that are wanting to do it themselves can access Facebook Portal via an enterprise license. That gives you access to Portal, but also access to a site license. You get all the analyzer, retargeter, and uh, Facebook Studio seats that you need to deploy on your production. Again, walking in your Facebook pipeline early in production, and you have everything you need as you go into the rigors of of what production is going to throw at you. Now, uh, most importantly, before we go into the live demo aspect of it, if your team is interested in doing a trial of Facebook Portal, please reach out and contact us. At the end of the at the end of the webinar here, we are asking a survey question. Do you want to be contacted about Facebook Portal? Go ahead and check yes if you do. Uh, there is a uh, extreme amount of demand. We want to get you on the schedule. We want to be able to schedule that not only the demonstration, but the trial for your teams to try that out. If you're interested in the Mark IV headcam system, pair that trial together, do a test drive of the system, shoot your own data, run all that through. Um, it's even teams that are very used to analyzer and retargeter. If you're wanting to see sort of how portals sort of changes that part of your process, that's a great use for the trial. There's going to be in the, in the uh, contact box field here in go to webinar the ability for you guys to reach out and schedule those demonstrations, be sure to do that. So Max and Chris, I think we're ready to turn it over to you guys if you guys are set up and good to go. All right, so let's do it. So Chris and I are here set up in Los Angeles. We're gonna basically take it from, uh, take the reins at this point and walk through, as Pete mentioned, a full live demo of, of the whole process start to end. Uh, a couple things just to walk through at the beginning. We've got a bunch of different camera angles. We're gonna switch between them so you guys can see um, not only just this wide view as we're actually going through it, but we've got a, a feed of the head cam that we're gonna switch to in a minute once we record some stuff. And then we got a feed from Chris's desktop over here. So once we get into the actual processing, once Chris gets the file off, he's gonna go through portal and then he's gonna go through the, uh, the rest of the pipeline too in a couple ways. Uh, and you'll see all of that live. Um, but let's start from the beginning. So as Pete mentioned, this workflow usually starts with capturing good video. Uh, recommended to everybody to use our Mark IV head cams. This is really what the technology is built off of. We know if we can control the framing and get really good quality data, then everything that's going to go through Portal is going to process extremely easily. So today we're using the, head, uh, the Mark IV. I'm wearing it. I am the actor for today. Um, and just give you a heads up that I'm just going to be running through some random stuff, some random face expressions, um, some random dialogue. And what we're trying to do here is a couple things. We want to demonstrate that it's it's whatever you want to capture. Normally when Chris and I come on set with a team, we put the head cam on them and we ask them like, whatever it is your game or your film or your project is, you capture a sample piece of clip uh, that's likely what you're going to work with. So if it's a, it's a fighting game, maybe there's a lot of scowls, but since I'm wearing it today, I'm just gonna go through a range of expressions. We're also trying to keep the clip that I'm gonna record to about 10 seconds. I'm gonna say some, I'm gonna do as many things as I can with my face in that time frame. I'm also gonna try to um, do some smiles, some ranges. Uh, and then one of the things that Pete mentioned during his presentation was occlusion was, was one area that we're really proud of that. You don't want to encourage your actor to cover their face as they're going through their performance. But if your actor does have a moment where they cover their face uh, just for a couple frames, that the, the processing through Facebook Portal will work through it. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to probably touch my mouth or something for the at the end of my performance just so you guys can see that. Um, and then last, we're recording audio with this clip too. So a couple of times during this, as we start going through it, whether it's on Facebook portal or later on when we play the clip, you'll see sometimes the audio will not come through and sometimes it will. Yeah. The final product will have it. We're gonna try to put it all together for you at the very end here. But in case you're wondering, hey, why can't I hear this? I'll try to remember to tell you when you should and should not expect to hear it. Um, and I think that's about it. Chris, yep. you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to the head cam feed. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn on the light on the head cam here. I'm going to move some microphones around. Just give me a second while me and Chris get set up here. And the goal again, like we're, like you said, we're going to do this a couple times. The feed you're seeing obviously is the head cam uh, me right here. Uh, I'm going to probably do this take two times. I'm going to ask Chris how he likes it. 
uh, you guys will see the replay on your side. It probably won't have audio, of course, uh, but we're just gonna see if we like the performance and once we get one that we're gonna we're good to roll with, we'll pull that drive and then we'll, we'll take that clip. So when you're ready, Chris, let me, let me pull up my script of what I wanted to say. Yep. Oh yeah, just to remind myself here. Okay, right, I'm ready. ready. Mm -hmm. All right, head neutral face. Do some facial calisthenics. All right. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. Hold that neutral. Rolling. Ew. Chris, what is that? Do you smell that? You smell that, right? That smells good. Chris, is that you? I like it. Nice glow, Chris. And cut. Oh, I forgot to touch my face. All yeah. right. Dang it. You want to see it first? Yeah, let's just watch it real quick. So there's a scrunch, some good eyebrows. There's a smile. Okay, I can I can push that a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, and then I'm gonna remind me touch your mouth or something. Okay. Right, so I can remember to do I'll that last part. Down. Yep. All right, I'm ready. All right, feed should be coming back to the call. Stand by. And we're good. All right, neutral. And rolling. Ew. What is that smell? Chris, is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, man, that cologne smells good. And cut. Cool. <laughs> All right, one more time as playback. Let's see it. There's an ew. Good eye movement. Yeah, I'm seeing some good brows. All right. All right, good enough. I didn't smile as much as I wanted to, but hey, not an actor, so we'll go with it. All right. All right, so what's gonna happen now is Chris is gonna pull the drive. Let me, let me move some stuff around here. Chris is gonna pull the drive um, from our Key Pro there. If you guys aren't familiar with our head cam, the Mark IV records everything onto an AJA Key Pro device. It's our, our digital video recorder. Uh, once he pulls the drive, he's gonna connect it to his computer and start going through an actual, like pulling that one clip off of the machine itself or off of the, the hard drive itself and putting it onto his machine. Uh, the first step of his process is going to be actually to pull that clip and then get a, a neutral expression from me. We, if you notice while we were doing that clip, um, the first thing we did is he said, hey, do a neutral expression. So the first moment of both of my clips, I just stared straight ahead and did a neutral pose. Um, for the pipeline we're gonna show second here later on, that, that, Jace, uh, that um, neutral expression is going to be really necessary. Um, if you're using a traditional workflow into Retargeter, you won't need that, but we wanted to have it so we could demonstrate it. My point is, is that while he's pulling that file, it's just going to take a second. As soon as he gets it, we'll switch over to his desktop, and then he's going to first take that clip, he's going to go into Portal, and he's going to walk through the interface and show you all exactly how this works so that you can start to understand from your perspective what the workflow would entail. Uh, and then, of course, after we, after we process that clip live, it's about downloading, the finished, uh, or that, downloading that finished motion data file and moving into the second stage, which would be solving. Uh, we're going to start first. I'll let him go through. We're going to start first, and I think you guys are going to really like to see what that is. Sure. Let me know when you're ready, Chris. All right. I think I'm ready. Let's see. Awesome. Desktop. Go to. All right. So just to make sure everything's working, I'm going to play that clip back real quick. Go on. Ew. What is that smell, Chris? Is that you? Come on, Chris. This is a professional environment. But I got to tell you, man, that cologne smells good. Cool. All right. So the video looks good. So this is Face for a Portal. Uh, we're going to start by uploading the video. So I'm going to click here and drag and drop. So one thing to note is you can drag and drop multiple videos um, to the portal. Uh, Right now, I'm just going to be uploading one. You can name each video with your actor's name or actor ID so that you can sort and filter by actors. Uh, 
thing to note here is tracking versions. So we have different tracking versions and we'll be coming out with new ones. And you can select the tracking version based on the project that you're working on. So if you start in 5.11, you, you can continue to use 5.11 throughout your whole game, or you can upgrade to the latest and greatest, depending on your project, depending on your needs. So we give you that flexibility to choose what you're working with. Um, a thing to note is that you can use static cams here. Uh, because this is a head cam, we will be selecting a head cam. All of our videos coming out of our Key Pro come out if ro need a rotation of 90 to work. And then we're gonna be uploading a neutral pose. So this neutral pose is, uh, this neutral pose is to set the ex base neutral expression for a workflow that we're gonna show at the end here. Let's see if it uploads, cool. And we're gonna process. And we're gonna refresh and see if everything is working. Cool. One more time. Yep. All right, great. So let's go over the interface a little bit while this is uploading. So over here, we got an FWR file, which is your standard uh, retargeting file. Uh, below that, we have the JSON uh, file type. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit later, but for now, we're gonna be doing the FWR workflow and show you guys a faster way of getting into Maya and being able to animate right away without having to do any kind of tracking or training on the video. Um, right now, you can see what will happen when you do track it. You can see uh, we have the blue here. The blue is for the teeth. The, teeth are helping inform the jaw position. So um, it's something that we added to help better stabilize the jaw and track that better. Uh, if you have like a beard or some kind of occlusion, uh, anything like that. So it's just a much better jaw solve with that. Let's see. That video file, is it able to be downloaded whenever you're done? Yes, yeah, so you can download the video. So if you, uh, want to review it on your servers, you can download all these videos so that your animator can then load it into Maya and then, or just review the video. So if you see, if they see anything with the track data, you can go back and look to see if it's the tracking job and not shown here, but in the future, we're working on being able to take these track jobs back into Analyzer so that if you have any issues or things that uh, happen with the tracking that you don't like, you can bring it back into Analyzer. But from the last month or two that I've been working with this, I've never seen an issue with tracking when the facial, uh, when the video is good, uh, when you got good lighting and basically a good capture, right? Let's just refresh one more time, cool. So it's a little bit longer of a take, that's why it took a little longer, but we were able to do a thousand frames in about a minute and 40 seconds. Let's see how it looks. Man, I can't believe it was 18 seconds. That flew. I thought I only spoke for like 10. No, that was a long one. Wow, I yeah. should, have, should have cut that's it down. That's okay. It'll take a little longer to bake, but that's okay. Yeah, so you guys won't hear audio on this one. Yeah. Little bit of lag on my end from the internet, so just a heads up on your guys' side. So you can see there with the occlusion, it was able to push by it. Let's track one more time. So the idea behind this is rather than having to throw away a shot where you have four talent, and one includes their face, mm -hmm. you can use that data to get the rest of the face and then go in and start animating over that to correct that if you need to. Um, like Max said, or like Pete said in one of the videos, it'll hold the position of the last known face. So you won't have all this shaking data if it does go out of frame, which is great. You won't have to deal with a bunch of noise and blow it all away. It's just completed or it just freezes it. So what we're gonna do now is download the FWR file. Yeah, man, even for an 18 second clip and processing less than two minutes. I yeah, mean, I mean, considering on. Analyzer, you'd have to train the model and yep. do all that stuff. It's a, it's great. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're so used to being 30, 40 seconds because we're doing shorter clips that we're like, oh man, two minutes, but you gotta remember <laughs> an Analyzer workflow is hours, you yep. know? So right now we have MetaHuman in Maya. Uh, just so you guys are, or just in case you don't know, the hair doesn't transfer into Maya. It's only in Unreal, so that's why there's no hair or eyebrows or things like that. But what we're gonna show here is the retargeting workflow. So we're gonna go right into basically where an animator can pick this up in Maya. So 
I'm going to open up this. I'm going to select the performance. And uh, so a thing to note is the character setup file. So this is similar to what, or this is using the expression set. So if you've ever done an auto solve with retargeter and set all of the poses and the different facial expressions and then auto solve through, that's what this is. So I've already set it up with the MetaHuman using the controls. I'm going to import video, audio, and generate auto solve. And so right now what's happening is, is it's going through on a frame by frame and it's baking all of that information onto the control rig for the MetaHuman. Yes, yeah, so this normally takes just a little bit of time, yeah. but this uh, this is a faster approach to than what previously. Yeah. So at the end of this result will be, what will what will somebody be able to do with this data, I guess? Yeah, so the idea is that you can go right into animating. So your animator doesn't have to spend any time on analyzing or retargeting. You can go right into, an, uh, right into animating on top of what's already there as a base layer, or you can use this as your final. So if you have a background character or an NPC, or maybe it's a cinematic shot that's kind of wide, you can use this rather than have to go through the whole process of tracking and training. Then if you do go into that cinematic shot, you can use this generated auto solve to start animating on top of that. Or if your animator prefers, they can do our classic route, which we've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, they can go through and use retargeter and they can set all those expressions and really dial in all those facial movements. You may be, apologize if you mentioned this, I might've missed it, Chris. Is this, we're showing this specific with a metahuman character, but if teams oh, out yeah. there aren't using metahumans, does that matter? So, um, just like uh, our retargeter workflow, or this is our retargeter workflow, so it works with any of your rigs. Basically, uh, you're going in and you're grouping all of the controls uh, based on four different groups, the brows, the eyes, and the mouth, and then you got the head movement, depending on if you need that body movement. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically add those controls to those groups, and then when you go in and you set those expressions, uh, you're keying each expression on the first 48 frames and you get all those out. So does that answer your question? As far as like, if you, it, it, is that specific to MetaHuman? Oh though? yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing me back around. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, it is not specific to MetaHuman. Any rig will work that has blend shapes or controls on it. So it's not just a MetaHuman. This is just a character setup that we created to do this demo and to kind of show people what you can do with this uh, FWR file out of the portal. So let me close this and let's see how this looks. Play. Ew, what is that smell? Man, there's Chris, the audio. is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, man, that cologne smells good. <laughs> <laughs> so apologies for the audio level here i can't push it in maya but uh at the end when we do our comp chris, i'll push it up so you guys you? can hear it. but on, this chris. gives you this an idea of how you can go right into animating on top of this you, and get that information that cologne smells good totally yep right there at the end though maybe we want to talk through the motion of the mouth the environment the occlusion but i gotta yeah. tell you man yeah that cologne smells good so you can see in the occlusion on the mouth where it kind of jitters around a little bit, but you can see the eyes and the rest of the face is still good. So Ew. that allows you to that continue smell? working and not have to Chris, throw away a shot that, that the you? director really likes on, just this because is a of that. Professional environment. You can have your animator, because you're saving you. all this time not Close analyzing and retargeting, you can have your animator go in there and clean up that slight occlusion. But still best practices, try to work with your talent to not have that occlusion, obviously. What is that smell, Chris? Yeah, you is might want to you? pause the because they're probably Chris, hearing the playback is... audio as oh as I'm talking as we're talking. Yep. I, th I think everybody got the gist though. Okay. It was it was good, well por well portioned out. But yeah, really, we wanted to just highlight exactly how fast that can go. And as Chris mentioned, this is the starting ground. You can jump in from here. And if you're familiar with Retargeter, perfect. You're, if you want to use a Maya workflow, absolutely. You're you're ready to continue going as you normally would. Um, but. I'm hoping there's a lot of jaws dropped out there because you see how fast we've gotten to that final point where normally would have taken hours in the traditional analyzer or target or workflow. So Pete, probably a good time for you to come on and tell us what the crowd's saying. We're not seeing questions on our side, but I know Chris is gonna work on something real quick and uh, maybe 
maybe see your impression too of what you saw, Pete, when we played that back. Yeah, that, that looked fantastic. So anybody that had attended or not attended last week, that Maya portion of our demo was new. Right? Uh, one of the things I want to reinforce is this: this is what we really wanted to speak to is people that already use Retargeter. And then the next part of our demo is actually going to show you how you can use that JSON data in, in Maya and Unreal as well. So, Pete, I think we we have the video ready here. We're gonna Chris is going to continue to compile it and get like an actual final render ready out of Maya. Um, that's probably going to be available later. But right now we can just get the, the the Maya video that we just did. We can replay that real quick and then we can move on to the next portion. Just to, if that was a good time. Sounds good. All right, cool, cool. Chris, let me pass it to you. Like I said, he's we've got this final video. We're gonna get another one too, and then our team will actually upload it to Vimeo so you guys can see it. Ew, what is that smell? Chris, is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, man, that cologne smells good. <laughs> yeah, it looks well. Ew, what is that smell? Chris, is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, man, that cologne smells good. The next version we upload will probably be even better, but I, I'm looking forward to this cool. portion too. If you saw last week's demo, what we're gonna do now is move into a different pipeline. We're gonna, Chris just overviewed the FWR file coming out of Portal, but now we're gonna talk through the other one. So go ahead, Chris, take it away. All right. So uh, what we're gonna download now is this JSON data. And I'll walk you guys through while the that is making what it is and how it's all working. This allows you to go directly into game engine. So I'm just gonna copy this. Just cleaning up some folders, guys. All right, cool. So we're gonna go into Unreal and we're gonna run a script. The first thing we need to do is we need to create an animation blueprint in order to bake the animation too. So let's create that and go here and drag this in. Cool. All right. And then we're gonna go here and we're just gonna copy this script. So what this script is doing is it's looking at the JSON data and it's pointing towards another script that has relationships between what is coming out of the portal and the control rig, which I'll go over when this is baking. And let's start baking. Nope. All right. Python output. Gotta love live demos. Directory, users, document. All right. I think I left a space in my naming convention. Let's see if this works. I put it in the wrong folder. Ah, I see. Yep, that would be the issue. All right, so let's go here, XDS, and paste it here. And just to be safe, let's go to downloads and copy this again. Make sure we do the right one. It's like, why isn't it working? Yeah, exactly. There's no data there to work. Mm -hmm. All right, paste this. All right, and let's try this again. This. There we go. Yeah. Okay, great. And that folder structure, everything you just ran, that's just this script dependent, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just for me to do this demo quickly so I don't have to go through and switch a bunch of slashes yeah. and stuff like that because Python and Windows don't like to play nicely. Um, so what we're going to look at real quick is that data while we're sitting here. So the difference between this data and what comes out of the FWR is this is an open format and that you there are 38 expressions coming out of the portal and they're in a structure of zero to one. So you can see here, browse inner left and it comes from zero to one. So this allows you to uh, basically work with the data openly and create custom scripts to bake that data down into engine onto any rigs that you want um, in order to do that uh, we've built this script that's just an example for you to use it's not 
like a closed off thing, you can just look at this and create your own. But what you can see here is the I look left coming out of the portal is tied to the controls from the MetaHuman. And we're just using MetaHumans because they're very easy to use and they're just easily available and they look good. Um, Here's an example of an eye squint left where we combine multiple uh, values. So you can see here as the eye squint will hit one, the squint on the control rig will hit one, and then we added a little bit of cheek raise. And this can be tuned however you want for creatures, for characters, whatever control rig and controls you want to put this on, you can create this relationship. And you can do as many values as you want. A good example would be computer's chugging a little bit, uh, got Maya and Unreal open, uh, the mouth pucker. So you can see how many controls it took to get us to do a mouth pucker with the metahuman. And you can go in and tune these values yourself. So mm -hmm. you can batch it, you can do it on a per actor basis if you want to push and pull what your actor is doing or what your character is doing. Or you can add to this, you know, this is our example, but if you guys find better results by tuning something else with the rig controls, by all means. Yep little bit longer of a take too as usually we're done by now it's about 10 seconds so and then the same thing chris like we we saw this earlier with the fwr file and that was the starting ground for a retargeter like you know if somebody is used to and likes to work in maya what at the end of this can they do with it in unreal yeah. so you can go right into your engine you can work with the data in unreal you can chop it up and use it in the sequencer it's basically just a direct into engine skipping maya so if you're not a heavy maya user you can use this information use this process to go right into engine and use it it's perfect and i think when we're done we're not going to have the audio is that right not for this remember. no okay not for the unreal portion of it but once we're done showing it a couple times I will try to make a comp with the audio for okay. you guys to see it. So we'll bring the audio in later so you guys can see it, because that's always helpful. People yeah. want to see how synced everything is, and then they want to imagine, like, well, if we bring an actor in, can we really get all these pieces back in at the end portion, you know? And yes. And just to, like, uh, go over what's happening on a – it is all these expressions are being baked in Unreal on a frame-by-frame. Frame. So it's going through, and Unreal's writing – each frame to a sequencer. So the limitation to this speed is your computer and your scripting skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we were, if we had a big beefier machine, we'd probably yeah. go faster, right? Yep. That's all right. And then I know you wanted to show the, was it the timeline later so you can see all the controls yeah. throughout all the keys? Yep. So, so we'll go over like, yeah, we'll show all that. This is the time when you go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. You drop 20 files in, you bake 20 files out, you yeah. go get a cup of coffee instead of having to create a whole new tracking mm. model and do all that stuff. But then when you come back, you're like, oh man, look how much further I was than before. Yep. All right. Looks like we're almost done here. Oh, and I guess the one thing we didn't mention too is we use MetaHumans not only just to mention, like, because it's pretty ubiquitous, anybody can download it, but this data, we were also exploring that you can just put it straight onto other characters, yeah. right? So if you download six MetaHumans, right? Yep. You can transfer it from, you don't even have to bake it again, you could transfer it to another one, or you could bake it again if you want to, just to make sure you get all the details you can and have maybe a different relationship between your actor and your character, right? So it all depends on your workflow and what you're looking for in that quality. I think people are going to really like that because it helps them kind of play through a couple different options, especially if they have a whole scene of background characters. You yep. Know? So you can see here, uh, these are the controls for the control rig and it's all baked down onto that, or it's all, all the JSON information is baked onto the control rig. And let's just play it real quick. Bring this up so everybody can see and bring our sequencer back so we can hit play and play. <laughs> That's funny. I could hear my I could hear it as I'm watching my face. Yeah, I see I see Metamax in there. That's awesome. 
Yeah, it's Mad Max. That's a good description of it. That's All right, a good that's question. Bye. It's ew, right? Yeah. What's that smell? Yeah. <laughs> And it's perfect too. I mean, you know, I didn't trim my facial hair on purpose just to see how this mouth expressions would come, like the closed lips, like how this close this could really get to a finished product. Yeah. And on that point, best practice is capture the yep. cleanest you can. Totally. Always go for that if you want the top tier quality data. Mm -hmm. All right. Should play one more time just because I know that it can come through at different paces on the webinar. Nice. Cool. So Max, go ahead. Oh yeah, sure. So um, Chris just finished doing that comp in Unreal. So I want to at least show that for everybody so they can see the audio with the face that he just put together in that last demo we did. So go ahead, Chris. All right. Ew, what is that smell? Chris, is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, that cologne smells good. <laughs> All right, play it one more time. Sure. Ew, what is that smell? Chris, is that you? Come on, Chris, this is a professional environment. But I gotta tell you, man, that cologne smells good. Yeah, that works well. So we're going to upload that video too. You guys can get it off of, I think, our Vimeo page pretty soon. It's just in case you want to download it, pass it off to your team, anybody else that missed this call, um, if you want to be able to show, hey, I just watched the face for a crew record this, immediately process it or immediately track it and then immediately put it onto a metahuman character. And, you know, the whole thing probably took us five minutes, but we talked through each of the steps. So we did it throughout the course of this webinar. But I think that'll probably make the point clear that we're trying to get across here. And then, like Pete mentioned too, the recording of all this will be available uh, next week. So you can pass that along as well. So I wanna thank everyone that attended today. Uh, we will be sending the, the information out. Again, if you guys wanna schedule your, your demos, please go ahead and contact us. The, the contact links were in the chat box. Uh, if you miss those for whatever reason, go ahead and reach out directly uh, from our website. Or if you're already an existing customer, reach out to your Facewear rep. Uh, we can schedule demos and trials uh, right away, right? Make sure that you guys can start thinking about how you want to use this in your pipelines. Uh, Chris and Max, thank you guys for the last two demos last Friday and this uh, today. Uh, live demos obviously always bring a level of anxiety, but you can show the confidence that we have in this product to make sure that what you see is what you get. This isn't a glorified tech demo. You guys can use it today. So thank everyone for attending today, guys. It's been a pleasure uh, and we can't be excited to go get to work and get you guys using this right away. So. Thanks a lot, everybody.